In today's video, we're going to make our own yogurt by growing bacteria from milk. Hey, Cannon. Hey, Grace. How's it going? <laughs> it's good. We're here in the King of Random studio, but you're in Chicago, right? Yeah, I wish that I was hanging out with you guys, but you know, darn it, there's this whole pandemic thing and traveling just seems not the safest. We'll make it work anyway, because you know, social distance is fun, but when you're doing social distance science, it's even better. That's what I hear. Uh, we're cooking something today, right? We are. Hopefully it goes very smoothly. Um, I'm, I have all the stuff here that you sent me to get. I have some milk and I have some Greek yogurt and I have a thermometer. What am I doing? Well, you know, during this pandemic, all the fad was making sourdough. And I thought, you know, sourdough is cool. It uses microbes and everything, but yogurt is way cooler. So we're gonna make some homemade yogurt today. Here's the basic idea. We'll be breaking down the proteins in milk by boiling it, then adding bacteria to digest the sugars, which thickens the milk and helps us create our friend we all love, yogurt. I mean, is it kind of cheating? Yes, we're gonna use yogurt to make yogurt, but we'll be able to make so much more than what you bought from the store. So we're making just a large vat of yogurt. A large vat of yogurt is really a large vat of microbes. So you actually use bacteria, not bad bacteria, but good bacteria in order to make yogurt. And that's what we're gonna do today. Oh, uh, this is so crazy. So my family, we actually make Greek yogurt at home and that's kind of what we have done. Um, so I know the process of making it, but, and I know the science behind it, but I'm excited to talk to Kenan today and really dive into the microbes, the bacteria, and what really happens in this milk as it turns into yogurt. I love it, let's get cooking. So the cool thing about this experiment is that it actually doesn't take that long to do. The longest point of time is going to be waiting for the yogurt to actually set while the bacteria does its job. But making it itself, is pretty snappy. Okay, so I have my hot plate, it is getting toasty, and I have this giant that, I guess it's a pot. This is a pot. And so now I just dump all my milk into it, right? Yeah, that's pretty much. I mean, there are recipes that you can follow. You can, either, you can use any kind of milk. In fact, something that's really cool is all you need from the milk is a sugar and some protein that will coagulate, which means that you can use any kind of milk from bovine milk, such as sheep, cows, goats, to even things like coconut milk or almond milk to make your yogurt. I'm using some 2% reduced fat milk. Um, it's Organic Valley. I like it. I uh, also went with 2% reduced fat milk. Uh, mine's good and gather though. I love that. All right, so I'll make a, on a small scale here and you make it on your king of random scale. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good since we have that capability here. So now we just have to let this heat up to what temperature are we looking for, Kenan? We are gonna heat this up to 185 degrees or 85 degrees Celsius. And there's tons of bacteria in here. So if you just leave your milk that's sitting out on the counter, it will spoil, right? Right. And the reason that it'll spoil is because there's bacteria in there. So we leave it in the fridge because cold temperatures will slow the growth of bacteria. And heat acts as a catalyst, correct? Exactly, they like, they like being in warm conditions. It allows them to grow faster. So we're gonna use this high heat to kill off any of the bacteria that's already existing in the milk. That way we can add the bacteria specifically for our yogurt, from our yogurt, into there to make sure that we only have the good bacteria that we want. It makes perfect sense, but what is this good bacteria that we're talking about here that we want to keep? I know that yogurts have probiotics, so is that what we're trying to keep healthy and positive here? That's exactly it. So I feel like a lot of times when we think about bacteria, we think about germs, right? The ones that make us sick. The percentage of bacteria that actually make us sick is very small compared to all of the bacteria that there are. Most of the bacteria do nothing for us and a lot of them are actually very helpful. In fact, inside of you right now, there are more microbes and bacteria than there are human cells. That's kind of nasty. Oh yeah, yeah. There's about 30 trillion human cells that make you up. So think heart, lung, kidney, skin cells, 30 trillion of those. But research has shown that there's about 39 trillion bacterial and microbial cells in and on you at any given time. So you're outnumbered by nine trillion to one. So I have some Chobani uh, Greek yogurt, non-fat and plain. <laughs> um, and I think what's, what's really interesting is even on this package and on this labeling, it says billions of probiotics. 
I totally see that also. Billions. Now I have a question for you. Before we populate that environment, do we have to be careful to make sure that we're not gonna kill, like do we have to let this milk cool down before we add the yogurt in? Because I kind of fear if we're deteriorating and breaking apart the proteins now, don't we have to let it cool a little bit so we don't kill off the good bacteria? <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. You got me, <laughs> I'm getting in front of myself. Yes, very important. So after we get it to 185 degrees, we wanna make sure that that milk cools down to somewhere in between 95 degrees and about 120 degrees. That's a good window where bacteria like to thrive. And 185. All right, so I'm turning this heat off. So a couple ways that you can cool this off are you can either just turn the heat off and let it sit. I would take it off the burner because the burner is going to have residual heat. Okay. So you can either just take it off the burner and let it sit at room temperature. You could put it in some cool or lukewarm water. That'll help drop the temperature a little bit quicker. Cool. I'm actually going to take, I'm going to go get something from the kitchen, take it off, and then set it on a surface. Now my proteins are all broken up, correct? They're ready to be bonded? They are. As they cool back down? Cool. They are. So this is sterile milk. This is pasteurized milk. Pasteurized. Yeah, so the process invented by Louis Pasteur, the father of microbiology, but this process is just using heat to kill off most of them. I can't say it's completely sterile. I don't know how aseptic it is, <laughs> uh, but it's mostly clean. There. Oh my goodness, that's globby. <laughs> that is a lot. I was thinking like maybe a tablespoon, but uh, you know. Oh, not the whole container? I was going cold container, man. So not only does this work for making yogurt, but it also works for making things like sour cream and cream cheese as well. So now this homie just goes and sits in my oven overnight, right? Yep, throw it in your oven if you can and leave it set at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And within seven hours or so, it should be set and you should be able to start tasting it until it's at the right amount of tanginess that you like. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in and um, I guess I'll talk to you later. How's that sound? All right, well, sounds good to me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and like mix this or I'm gonna try to cut through it. It's super jello-y. I mean, it just like heals back. Ooh, it's all curdly. Yeah, you want it to be nice and thick. So that curdly is gonna be caused by those proteins uh, coagulating together. Um, is this gonna taste sweet? Uh, it's most likely going to taste a little zesty. Uh, and that's from the lactic acid. So the lactic acid is what gives it a tart or sour flavor. You can think of this, uh, this is just acids in general. Low pH gives you a tart flavor. Think of a lemon, right? Mm -hmm. A lemon's got that tart, sour flavor and that's from the citric acid that's in it. So you're telling me the lactic acid in my body, if I were to extract it, would taste sour? Yes, if we had cultures of lactic acid of grace in our yogurt, you would be sour. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a try. I'm expecting it to be sour. I'm not really excited about it, but I feel like I have to try it. Um, bon appetit. Tart and bitter and chunky, and I think I need to like mix it <laughs> better. Oh, that was that was not it. Oh, I have <laughs> I have legit chills. I have legit oh, no. chills. That was so bad. <laughs> So I'm going to guess that yours is extra strong because you threw a whole cup of yogurt into there. <laughs> so yours, and then you still let it go overnight. So you've had a lot of lactose, lactic acid fermenting going on in there. I don't think mine's set up all too well. <laughs> so enjoy your yogurt at home. This one is, it looks more like cottage cheese. I mean, this is the same process for making both cottage cheese and regular cheese, so maybe you went a little bit too far on the spectrum. <laughs> I think I made cottage cheese. Well, I'm gonna eat, enjoy my honey and banana and yogurt. Bon appetit to me. So this was really fun. Normally my, my yogurt sets up better than this when I've made it in the past. Um, it struggled a little bit today, but that's okay. Guys, if there's anything you want to see us make in the kitchen with yogurt, try this recipe again. And if you have any ideas for how we can do cool things with bacteria, let us know in the comments below on what you want to see. And maybe Ken and I can make it happen. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit that video right there to see our latest ones. See you then.